it has not been clear why Hizb al-Tahrir are refuted. How much clarity? And I wanted to know why they were refuted. And what is wrong with their way of da'wah. First of all, Hizb al-Tahrir, the party of liberation. When was it established? Abu Hanifa? Malik? Shafi? Maybe Ahmed. Which era? Early generations? 1957 or 50, in the uh, mid 50s. So it is, in, an, in organizational terms, it is a bid'ah. It is newly invented ibtida fi deen, an innovation in the religion, an organization never existed before the 1950s. Founded by an individual known as Taqiyuddin al Nabahani. Taqiyuddin Nabahani was a person of tasawwuf, a Sufi. His father was a Sufi, an extreme Sufi his father was. He himself joined Al-Ikhwan Al-Muflisin, the organization founded by Hassan, an organization founded in the 1920s. He fell out and set up his own group. Even though their goals are the same, both of them political. So he set up this organization in the 1950s. He said that I want to establish the Khilafah in 13 years, using this methodology. What year are we in now? 2010. Did this methodology work? Didn't work. This person, his aqeedah, Taqiyuddin Nabahani, and the aqeedah of his Tahrir, is an aqeedah that is mu'tazali. They deny the punishment in the grave as a matter of aqeedah. They deny the akhbarul ahad. Those narrations, possibly, most of Sahih Bukhari, they don't believe in as it relates to the Aqidah. Right? Because they believe that these narrations do not reach the level in Ilm al-Hadith, it is called the level of Mutawatir. So they reject, for example, the bridge over the hellfire. They reject the punishment in the grave, the questioning in the grave by Munkar and nakir These Hadith Bukhari and Muslim, in all of the Kutub al-Sitta, they say we can't believe in them. In fact, there's a famous statement from Taqiyuddin Nabahani in which he states that anyone who has iman in the questioning of the grave and the punishment of the grave, then he, ha then he is a sinner. However, it is obligatory upon him in the prayer to seek refuge from it. Get your head around that one, if you can. Umar Bakri Muhammad Fustuk, which means pistachio in Arabic, but his name is Fustuk, so I call him Fustuk, Pistachio. This individual, in the 1990s, he used to repeat that statement of the founder of his Tahrir, Taqiyuddin Nabahani. He used to say, whomsoever has Iman in the punishment of the grave, then that person is a sinner, not allowed to believe in the punishment of the grave with certainty. However, it is obligatory at the end of your Salah, in your Tashahud, to seek refuge from the punishment of the grave. So I'm sitting there thinking, well not sitting there, alhamdulillah. When I first heard it, I thought, and the crowd is listening to this? They actually listen to this? In fact, there was one of them, he was a leader of Hizbut Tahrir in the Midlands. We used to call him Harley Davidson. Because anytime you see him, he only wears two t-shirts. Harley Davidson, this was in the mid-90s, early-90s. Or Nirvana. Remember the pop group? You know Nirvana is only with the Hindus. Becoming one with the idols and whatever. Right? You should call him Nirvana or Harley Davidson. I said to him, square that circle for me. How can you not believe in the punishment of the grave, yet you hold it obligatory to seek refuge from it? He goes, ah, oh, brother, this is Mustala Hadith. I said, go on in, break down Mustala Hadith to me. He said, you see Mutawatir Hadith. We accept them in Aqeedah. And as for the, the hadith that come by, by Khabr al-Ahad, we can't accept them in Aqeedah. I said, okay, this is the way of the Mu'tazila. So you're Mu'tazili. Whom, whom all the scholars spoke against. I said, so what? He said, but the seeking of the refuge, the Ahkam, is from the rulings, it's not from the Aqeedah. Because making dua in the Salah is from fiqh. So, we accept Khabrul Ahad in the Ahkam. So therefore, we seek refuge 
with our tongues. But we don't believe that it would take place. And I said, and you think that the Prophet was upon that? That he would seek refuge from the punishment of the people not believe in it? So we seek refuge from something that doesn't exist? That's not going to take place? He said, yes, but you don't understand. I said, of course I don't understand, because I'm a human being. Right? And you are obviously something detached from humanity. This is what they believe. Hizb al-Tahrir believe that the most important affair of the Muslim Ummah is the Khilafah. Most important affair of the Muslim Ummah is the Khilafah. And the rulers, and in this book we quote Hizb al-Tahrir, quote after quote, they mention that the whole of the world is Darul Kufr, even Makkah and Medina. All of the world is in Kufr, even Makkah and Medina. They mention that there is no Muslim country. All of them in Jahiliya. This is takfir. This is takfir. This is declaring Muslims to be unbelievers. In one of their statements they said that those who claim that Islam, there is such a thing as a moderate Muslim and an extreme Muslim, that this is, a, this is something which is a lie, a misnomer. There is no such thing as moderate and extreme Muslim. There is only one type of Muslim and we should all be together. There is no such thing as extreme Muslim. So what are the Khawarij then? Imam Ahmed was lying. What? There is no Murjia? The great scholars of the past were lying. Ibn Abbas was lying. Ali was lying. We mentioned the Khawarij of Ghulu. That the scholars of one that they mentioned the Tabi'in and the Tabi'in. That they are Ghullat. That they go to extremes exaggerating the religion. What? There is no exaggeration in the religion? So everyone is upon one way, everyone is balanced. So they lie. And maybe they're not lying, maybe they're just ignorant. Hizb al-Tahrir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all of the prophets and messengers to call mankind to the worship of Allah. Hizb al-Tahrir believe that the greatest goal is the establishment of the Islamic State. So where's the proof? Where's the proof? That the prophets and messengers were sent to establish the Islamic State. Where's the proof for that? Allah mentions in the Quran, "وَلَقَدْ بَأَثْنَ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ الْمُتَّعَبُونَ." We not send messenger except to every nation. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِ إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَأَبْدُونَ. We did not send before you a messenger, O Muhammad, except that we inspired him to say that there is nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. So worship him. Oh, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned, the call. Or the sayings of the of the Anbiya. Ya Allah. Ma lakum Oh my people, worship Allah. You have nothing worthy of worship except for Him. This was the call of the Prophets and Messengers. So where did the Khilafah come in? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions an ayah in the Quran about the Khilafah. Allah mentions that this is a promise from your Lord. Ba'ad Allah alladhina amanu minkum wa'amilu salihat. A promise from your Lord for those of you who believe and work righteous deeds that Allah will give the khilafah in the earth. Allah will give you the khilafah, give them the khilafah in the earth just as He gave it to those who came before them. And Allah will establish for them their religion. The religion that He is pleased with. Surah Nur. The religion that He is pleased with. And change their condition from a condition of fear and insecurity and change it to a position, to a state of security. So long as they worship me alone, and they don't associate partners with me. That's what Allah mentions. So who establishes the Khilafah? Listen to the ayah. A promise from your Lord, for those of you who believe and work righteous deeds. That Allah will establish for them the Khilafah. Who establishes the Khilafah? Allah. For whom? For those of you who do what? Believe and righteous deeds. And that they worship Allah alone. And that they do not commit shirk with Allah. So Allah has mentioned that if you do four things, that Allah will do for you three things. The four things that you have to do. Man, righteous deeds. Worship Allah alone. Don't commit shirk. What does Allah say in this ayah that He will do? He will give you the khilafah. He said for you your religion. And change your condition to a change to a condition of security. So Allah didn't mention that any of the goals of the prophets was khilafah. So why do they say khilafah then? 
from their aql. And this is the way of the Shia. Hizb al-Tahrir resemble the Rafida. Because the Rafida do the same thing. The Rafida do the same thing. But the greatest thing for the Rafida is the Imama. The Imama is the greatest thing. That the rulership is the most important thing to them. From the beginning right up until this day. Hizb al-Tahrir are no different. They are a deviated sect. Deviated in Aqeel. They curse the companions. Did you know that? They believe that Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and Amr ibn al-As and Sayyid Qutb did the same thing. They accuse them of treachery. Companions of Allah's message they speak against. Sayyid Qutb spoke against Muawiyah. Sayyid Qutb spoke against Amr, uh, Amr ibn al-As. Sayyid Qutb. Likewise, his ta'id. They belittle and criticize the companions of Allah's message. And that in it, anyone could as one of the Sahaba is an innovator, a deviated individual, misguided. This is his tahrir. And that's why, Wallahi, their dawah will never be successful. And yes, they are khawarij. They are khawarij because they fulfill. You want to know a khawariji? If I was to say to you, describe to me a bottle of Coke or a can of Coke, you'd say red and a silver wavy line. And the word Coca-Cola written in italics on the side of it. So you now, if you see a bottle like that, you know it's a bottle of Coke. Agreed? Sifat, you recognize things by their characteristics. There's a tree. It has a trunk. And as the trunk grows, it falls over each other. And at the top, there are palm leaves. And dates grow from it. So it is a date palm, leaf, date palm tree. Right? You know a thing by characteristics. Khawarij, we mentioned their characteristics. Takfir. Declaring. Person to be kuffar. Hizb al-Tahrir do that. They believe that the rulers must be rebelled against. Hizb al-Tahrir and Fajr don't believe that. They believe that the whole of the, that there is no Muslim country in the world. So they must rebel against them. And they make takfir upon them. Because they must be lands of kufr and jahiliya. He put takfir do that. This is what they're all upon. And then upon that note, round up. And time is round. The final the takfir, takfir yun. No, don't, don't listen to these doubts of these people. First of all, they mentioned a there is a narration of Imam Ahmed in Sharh Al Aqidat Al Tahawiyya. Right? First of all, Aqidat Al Tahawiyya is not by Imam Ahmed. And there is no Sharh of Aqidat Al Tahawiyya by Imam Ahmed. Why? Why? Because Imam Al Tahawi came after the death of Imam Ahmed. So, how can Imam Ahmed have a Sharh of Aqidat Al Tahawiyya? when Imam Ahmed died before Imam Tahawi was born. But as for making takfir based upon an act itself, then that is not established. In some issues, yes. In some issues, yes. Like for example, the example that I gave you, that a person, that he disbelieves in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, no, he's not the final prophet. He's a tough we'll stop. Anyway, the discussion is a lengthy one. We'll conclude upon the barakallahu people. سبحانك الله وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. When that book comes out, إخوان, grab hold of that book and give it to every person who's influenced by the people of Takfir. Because this book doesn't convince them. This is this is the hujja against them. إن شاء الله. بارك الله فيكم.